Um, savings rates are at a 50-year low. So what can be done to encourage more of us to put our money away for a rainy day, a broken car, whatever it is? Steph is having a look. Yeah, it's interesting this because if you look at the proportion of our income after tax that we actually save, it's fallen really significantly. So back in the 90s, we'd save about 15%. But now it's around 4%. So mm. that's why we're talking about this being at a 50-year low because it's uh, the, you know, a very low figure compared to what it was uh, 50 years ago. Um, but the reason why we're talking about it is because it's a worry because, as you say, there's a lot of people out there who don't have any money aside if something unexpected happens, like they need repairs on their car mm. or perhaps their bills suddenly go up for whatever reason. Why aren't we saving? What's, 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 happened? what's changed? Well, it's, it's a number of reasons. So um, we, you've, you've mucked up the graphic order now. Oh, so sorry. now yeah. <laughs> I'm like, suddenly oh, thinking, how am I going to get in the other You keep talking, Steph. <laughs> I'll ask you that question in a minute. <laughs> so, what's this one, Steph? So this one is because <laughs> the research... Love your honesty. Only because everyone panicked in my ear going, oh, no! <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah, 16 million of us save less than... A, have £100, less than £100 saved. And, right. you know, the, there's lots of different research saying one in six people wouldn't be able to afford it if their bills, like their mortgage, suddenly went up by £30 or, uh, or more, and that could put a lot of pressure on people. So, Dan, why aren't people saving? Well... <laughs> What's the answer to that question, Steph? I've got a graph for you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a look at this graph, it just shows you the saving rates and it's totally plummeted. So, you know, you're not getting as much back as you would for your money right. in the past. And there's a number of reasons for that. A lot of it's to do with the financial crisis. So if you look at where the graph starts back in 2007, that's when things kicked off with the banks. And what happened is the central banks pumped money in the system to try and loosen things, to ease things up and get the banks borrowing again. But that me meant they had a lot of cheap money, so they didn't need our savings because obviously the banks use our savings to invest and make money. Uh, so they didn't need it. So the rates were very low and and of course the bank base rate which we report on uh, regularly has also been historically low for a long time so that's why a lot of people aren't saving and also because a lot of people can't afford to save mm. there's lots of people who are literally on the bread line they've got they've got their income they budget they've got their incomings but their outgoings don't leave them any money uh, mm. left to save and uh, we've got a clip from Anna Bores who can tell us a bit more about this it is looking a bit bleak out there for savers, especially if they hold money with or they're looking to their high street bank for a savings account because they pay some of the worst rates on the market. The good news is that there are some lesser known banks and building societies that are paying better rates. There is still competition there. And actually what's important if you can is to definitely get back into that savings habit because putting money aside on a regular basis should give you that peace of mind. And then by shopping around for the best rates, that'll give you some valuable interest on top. So, Steph, what can be done <laughs> to encourage people? To <laughs> I don't have a graphic more. for this one, but yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> what can be done? Well, obviously, if the rates got better, then more people would save money rather than uh, spending it. Because of course, when rates are low, you're better off paying your debts yes. uh, than you are uh, saving. Um, but also, there's quite a lot of quirky things coming in, so apps which can um, make it really straightforward to take the money direct from your salary. Um, but one thing that's been trialled, which I think is really interesting, is that supermarket checkouts. Do you know when you've been around a supermarket and you get to the checkout and then you suddenly save money because of various promotions and mm. things? Mm. What they're looking at trialling is having that money go straight into a savings account rather than you getting the saving there and then on your money. Um, in the hope that that might mean you will not realise you're That's saving, if you know what yeah. I mean. And it, it, I mean, some people might just prefer to get the discount there and then, but that's just another way of trying to encourage savings because the government do really want us to try and save more money. Thank you very much, Steph. <laughs> Teamwork <laughs> makes the quite, dream work. That's quite an interesting way of doing it, actually, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'll see you a little bit later. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, around 80,000 customers were duped into making bank transfers to fraudster, fraudsters last year. Steph is having a look at how we can stop ourselves doing that. Morning. Yeah, morning to you. Morning, everyone. Yeah, this is a particular type of fraud we're talking about, and it's where people are tricked into transferring money to a scammer's bank account. Now, crucially, uh, as far as the bank's concerned, it's a legitimate payment, something called an authorised payment fraud. And up until now, it's been a bit hit and miss as to whether consumers actually get their money back. Last year, authorised payment scams from personal accounts totaled more than £200 million. 
but get this, only around £42 million was actually returned to customers. So a lot of people uh, losing out from these types of frauds. Uh, well, with me now is Nina Barty, who's a campaigns manager at Twitch. Thank you very much for joining us. Can you just explain a bit more about the type of frauds we're talking about? Because some people at home might be like, well, it's their own fault if they'll give their money to scammers. But they're, they're much more sophisticated than we think, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Every day people are losing what can be life-changing sums of money where they've clicked yes to the payment but actually they thought they were sending their money to their builder or their solicitor or even sometimes their own banks where they've been tricked into thinking actually my account has been hacked and I need to move it into a different account to keep it safe but once they've clicked yes that's it they don't really have any protections and then they face a double blow of having to battle with their banks with with little hope of getting their money back mm. you know TSB today with their refund guarantee is um, having a groundbreaking move where they're saying actually we're going to presume that our customers are innocent and we're going to help them give them the peace of mind that they're going to get their money back and then help them get their lives back on track yeah it's something we've covered on watchdog as well that the kind of fight people have for thousands of pounds that they've lost so do you think it is the bank's responsibility to try and give the money back because at the end of the day the, the customer has given the money to a scammer but as you noted you know these are increasingly sophisticated scams and we know that banks are much better placed to spot and prevent these scams from happening in the first place. And it's great to see that, you know, TSB's noted that. They've said this is really hard for people to spot. They don't mean to lose their money. And actually what we're going to do is treat our customers with compassion mm. rather than worrying about our bottom line and do more to support them and prevent this fraud from happening in the first place. Why do you think TSB have come out and done this, said that they're now going to you know, assume that the customer's innocent and give them the money back? So we know TSB's had a bit of a tough year. Um, they had some IT failures in the beginning of the year, but it looks like this has really sharpened minds of TSB bosses to say we need to tackle this in a different way. Clearly, year on year, uh, the number of frauds occurring are increasing. The amount of money lost um, is going up and expecting people to protect themselves mm -hmm. isn't working. Yeah. Fraudsters are winning. People are losing out and actually their lives are being derailed by this and saying they're saying we need to take a different approach. And it's great to see. Yeah. And as you say, a good PR for TSB. You've had a tough time over last year. Uh, what about people themselves? What can they do to try and protect themselves in all of this, too? Because even if they, you know, losing the money can be really devastating for people in that fight back to try and get it back. I think, you know, what, what, we, what we really think is actually this is about, um, depending on who you bank with, about the support that you'll get and what banks can do to support you here. People will be questioning why is it that TSB customers can get this refund guarantee and yet what are my banks, my, my bank doing to protect me? People um, will do not want to fall victim to a scam. It is not only losing the money, but it can really be emotionally devastating to them. This is about noting that they are a victim of a crime. There's very little that they can do when these are such sophisticated scams to protect themselves and it really is up to banks to say right what can I do to better protect my customers and help them get back on their feet yeah interesting Nina thanks very much for your time this morning appreciate that that's it for me for now that's all good advice thank you